Hey guys, I'm back. I'm here for an intro. I'm probably hearing my voice this winter is uh, kicking my ass a little bit, but that's not going to stop what we're doing here. So, you'll see the same intro, uh, the same, you know, at the beginning anyway, of the first four Throwback Thursday videos, um, with a little bit at the end to tell you what's going on. Um, I recently discovered some old videos, and I'm talking old, from the Doc P channel. Um, if you're familiar a little bit with the history, if you've been following me for a while, great. If, you, if you're kind of relatively new. So I originally started my channel in 2012 while I was deployed. Looking for some advice from, you know, the world, doing some, some knife modifications, getting into the customization and stuff. In 2014, I kind of took a break from everything to, you know, focus more on military things that I had going on. Uh, I don't know exactly what happened, but my channel had just been deleted, erased. In 2015, I brought it all back, um, and I posted some of the older videos. I guess not all of the older videos got reposted back onto the new channel, and I found some of those videos. And so what I'm going to do for the next little bit is I'm going to have kind of a throwback Thursday. And, you know, normally I post my videos Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, well, as best as I can anyway. And every once in a while, there's like a little bonus video here and there, you know, as it comes up. But so for the next little bit, on Thursdays, we're going to do a throwback Thursday. And I'm going to post one of these long lost videos that I just found. You know, they're different. You know, my, my style has changed. Um, I like to think that the video quality has improved. This all kind of works out pretty well, too, because lately a lot of folks have been asking um, if I was ever going to start showing you know, custom stuff again, and knife modifications, and, you know, a lot of the custom work that I started the channel with. So, um, here, here comes some. Cool. Now, throughout, you know, all these videos, there might be some links in the uh, video description to show you some of the, the other videos that they talk about or reference um, throughout, because, you know, they, they, talk, they, they do reference some of the older videos that might still be on the channel. So, make sure you check the video descriptions to see some of those if you want to kind of you know, ping pong out to those things. So the second of the initial batch of Throwback Thursday videos, um, this one is gonna show some custom work I did on a couple of Doug Ritter Griptilians. It's really a shame they don't sell those anymore. They were really nice. Real, I mean, probably some of the best Griptilian blades you could get. I really, really uh, like those. I wish I still had one. I don't have any more right now. Um, there's also some uh, Benchmade 810 work and some work on a Strider SMF that you know, I, if I worked on the same knife right now, I'd recognize it as a fake immediately. Um, six, seven years ago, I didn't really recognize right away that it was fake. I've learned a lot since then. It was a fake. Uh, but it, the work still came out pretty good. But, yeah. So, um, take a look at that. So, uh, I take it that people sort of enjoyed the, the week of EDC video. And one of the things that I've gotten a lot of messages about and great comments on was what I did to my 810. So I thought we'd uh, spend a minute or so just looking at it because I really don't have a set agenda on this video at all. But uh, this was something I wanted to do for a while with the 810. You all know I hate the scales that come on it, these these super thin, you know, squared off edge things. Um, so I just figured, what the hell, I'm going to take some time and I'm going to remake it the way I like it. So I took that uh, coarse textured OD green. Um, threw it on there, real simple, didn't even do anything that crazy, just just got the, the shape right. Um, I, I went and put some grooves in there, you know, number one for the thumb stuff, put that in there, and then uh, sort of for style, sort of for practicality, I put those grooves on either side. Um, it feels great. I love this knife, and I carry it around all the time, much, much better than, than what comes on it. And right now in the works, I've got Two of you YouTubers out there that uh, want me to redo their 810s exactly like this. So yeah, I'm glad to do that for you because this is a much, much nicer feel than what comes on it. Um, other than that, you know, nothing fancy. Everything's stock as the knife comes right out of the box. All right. Here's something that I had just finished working on, kind of just a little bit after I finished the original video. It's another 810. Um, the owner didn't want to send me the knife, just wanted the scales done, so I had to, had to put it on one of mine as just kind of a frame. But red and black G10, and this is hard to find, this red and black, because most of the red and black out there ends up looking like brown, like kind of a wood grain weird color. So I had just a little bit of this left. Originally we were, we were talking about just an Anzo type pattern, but um, I wanted it to be a little bit unique, a little bit different. So I ended up going with sort of like a flowy, almost lava kind of pattern. A little bit uneven, but definitely kind of has a sense of like, I don't know, movement, 
not to get too artistic about it going on there. Uh, just different different depths, different levels. Uh, I think the look of the, the red and black G10 on this knife is, is actually pretty good overall, you know? Looks pretty nice. Well, I figured that with this video I was going to talk about some new additions to the collection. Um, just a couple things that I've, I've thrown in the shelves lately that I really like. Um, some things I think are kind of cool and some extra work I did. So I guess we'll just start at the top over there. Um, so Griptilians, big Griptilian fan, you all know that. So I found something that is kind of like really cool to have because how many of you have seen a red-handled Griptilian before? The answer is probably not many. REI put out a special edition that is maroon, and yeah, I apologize, I'm back in my crappy indoor lighting. Um, I didn't realize how bad my lighting was till somebody told me it was bad, and ever since then I'm like really self-conscious about it, but. REI has a special edition mini grip that comes in maroon. This is red, you probably can't tell the difference here. Had good weather for me to get outside and do a little bit, and I don't wanna reshoot the whole video, so I'll just kinda of splice this in, but now you can see the difference between the red and the maroon, um, or is it scarlet? I don't know, I think they call it maroon, but. Can't get those red handles anywhere except the trainers. And I'm just really digging the combination of the red, and then you've got some black hardware and the black blade. I think this looks really nice. I'm probably just going to start carrying this around for a little while. I just like it. really like the look of it. Benchmade will not, even with the custom Griptilian section, sell you a red Griptilian because they reserve the red color for their safety trainers. For safety reasons, I guess. I wanted a red one so bad, I actually tracked down one of the trainers and basically swapped the blades with one of the my older uh, 550s with the oval hole. So I now have a red Griptilian in my collection. It's a big deal to me if it's not, if you guys think it's dumb and dumb. But uh, I'm really happy because it just kind of stands out really special. So now I've got this trainer blade, which I'm going to do nothing with at all. So I'm wondering if anybody's got any good ideas. I thought maybe I'd try to sharpen it and just see what we could do with it. Um, or I actually saw just, just a solitary Griptilian N680 uh, blade and I put a bit on that, but basically by the time the bidding was over, I, I might as well just buy a new Griptilian and throw the blade in here instead. So if anybody's got any cool suggestions on what to do with this or how to sharpen it up, you know, I mean, short of just standard grinding it and putting an edge on it, let me know. I think it'd be interesting, something we could look at, <clears throat> because I have no use for the trainer blade whatsoever right now. It's just, just there. Moving on, uh, I found something. It's not new, but it's new to me. I hadn't seen it before. Uh, huge Kershaw fan. I like CRKTs. I think in general they're a little overpriced, and they're really they're hit or miss for me. But I just saw this in the BX one day, and something about it called to me, so I went and I got it. And it is the Ken Onion designed Foresight, and I actually I really like this knife. Number one, you can tell it's a Ken Onion just by looking at the blade. I'm not going to do a mini review on it or anything because I, I looked. There's like 110 videos about this knife out there, um, but if you're not familiar with it, because I wasn't when I saw it. Uh, we're looking at 6.3 ounces, so pretty heavy. Steel blade, steel liners, aluminum handles. 3.5 inch blade, 8.69 inches overall. Uh, and the blade is aus awesome. It's got a really nice coating on it. Um, razor sharp out of the box. This one says first production. I don't know if they all say that, but, um, you know, it doesn't have a number on it or whatever. But what's really cool about it is the feel. These aluminum handles, they feel really good. There's just no reason to do them over in G10, because that was what I was thinking of uh, at first. Because these just, they fit, your hand fits really nicely into there. Uh, it's just really good. Kind of a weird pocket clip. It's not adjustable, can't go anywhere. Um, and it, it, it doesn't feel very secure just because it's so little, but it actually is pretty secure in your pocket. It's flipper, and that seems to be more and more popular these days. And it has the IKBS instead of just uh, standard washers. So really this thing just flows out super smooth. Because of all the coatings on everything, it doesn't have that really hard snap that you would expect. So that takes some getting used to, from my point of view anyway, but actually, I've, I've come to really like it. So I carry it now and then. Um, just, it's a good all-purpose knife. Looks kind of badass too, you know, that Ken Onion bump design in there. So just something new, I don't know. I, I highly recommend it if you haven't seen it before. Nice collection edition. I've been told uh, very often that uh, two of the things I've got to have in my collection, you've got to have a military and a paramilitary too. So I kind of, uh, I wasn't sure about it for a while. I like Spyderco's, not as big a Spyderco fan as maybe uh, I should be, or as people would like me to be. But um, was in my local shop and I picked up one of each. And I'll tell you, I know I'm about to piss a lot of people off and I'm sorry. They're good, they're really nice. Just, it's it's not not doing it for me the way I had hoped. So let's look at the, uh, the military first. Got what I understand is a sprint run in um, tan 
which I thought was nice because, you know, the black ones are all over the place. I'm actually impressed with the size of this thing. This is awesome. This is almost like uh, the resilience on that huge just chunk of knife, but like with much better steel. So I actually, I mean, it's not that I don't like it. It's just, I don't know, for the hype, I don't know what I was expecting. Maybe for it to cook me breakfast and take me to the moon or something, but I don't know. I know people love these things to death, and I do like it. I really do. I love the S30V steel. I love the big Spyderco blade shape. Um, very comfortable handle. Just, mm, I don't know, something about it. But uh, it is really good, and I'm glad I have it in the collection. I'll probably go ahead and get one in black now, too. Um, feels really good. Really solid knife opening and closing. Um, yeah, so there's the military. Now, the Para 2 is, I mean, people rave about it over and over and over. And, and I understand why. It's, it's very, I mean, light knife, snaps open, feels really good. Um, it's just, this thing right there is, uh, I, I guess that's what it's for. So you don't have to shift it around in your hand to open and close. I'm just, I'm not feeling it, guys. I'm trying. I'm going to hold on to it a little bit more. But I have a feeling that very soon I'm going to be offering this up uh, for trade if anybody's interested. All right, next up is uh, a Strider I've been working on. A buddy of mine um, picked this up a while ago. It's an SMF. It's it's not just a standard SMF. It's a custom, apparently. Um, some differences from the standard. But he's really, really proud of this. And... I think I've shown this before just in the fact that I was playing with, with the heat anodizing and the blade regrind. Uh, he's totally happy with it right now, and I'm kind of jealous because I want it for myself. But um, nice, um, you know, heat anodizing there. We're calling it tie-dye titanium, we've decided, and I don't know if anybody's ever used that before. But it's just the, the different colors that come out on this are great. And I guess this is a, a product of not knowing exactly what I was doing. Because I know some people are very good at controlling that heat and the flow with the blowtorch to make it exactly what they want. But in the end, just with messing around, um, you can sort of see the, the colors on the clip. It's got a little bluer to the edge, more of a bronze in the middle. And then just all the colors on the outside came out really, really nice. Went with an OD green and black layered, not sure if you can tell, backspacer on this. That looks very, very nice. And just to kind of make it just that much fancier... We went with a very nice, um, very highly polished carbon fiber scale on that. And I haven't worked a whole lot with carbon fiber, and I'm just really starting to get into it. I love this stuff. There's so many different types out there. I'm still learning the different ones. So this is a 670 pattern, which is either better or worse than 690. I'm not sure. But uh, it, it's interesting to me because it's not like that square weave. It's like kind of an oval type weave. It really reflects the light very, very nicely. And then just to make this stand out a little bit more... He had me do a little blade regrind. Originally, this had sort of a, a, uh, a standard kind of blade shape to what a regular SMF would look like. Um, and what we did was we just kind of came up with a pattern together where we took it, took it down and then swooped it forward, sort of. It's not the cleanest job, okay? Uh, I don't have a whole lot of experience grinding metal. I'm still working on it. But I think you'll agree it looks, it looks pretty nice. I know that right now it looks like there's not a point on there. There is a point. It is not just a dull edge. It's just the way the light's reflecting right now makes it look like there is. So, uh, standard SMF compared to that. Okay. And then what we did was uh, we decided on a stone wash for the blade, which actually came out beautiful, I think. All right. So I am, I am entirely super jealous. Number one, you know, I'd like to have a, a custom strider myself. But after we put the work into this one, oh, I want it so bad. So gorgeous. So gorgeous. Um, so he's very, very happy with this little guy right here. And I'm happy to have worked on it. Yeah. What do you guys think? You think we should go with a, more, more of a highly polished look on there or just kind of stop where we're at? I don't know. Your opinions? I'm open to it. I guess the big thing that um, I've been talking to a lot of people about now are the, uh, the G10 scales on the, on the grips. People love them. People want them. Um, I've got two done that I've done over the past couple weeks. Uh, strangely enough, they're both Doug Ritter Grapillions 552s, so that's cool. And I did each of them just a little bit different, so we're going to look at them both. They both have um, coarse textured G10. This one is jade. This one is black. Um, I'm not going to throw too much personal info out there, but he did give me permission to put this in the video. Um, he works in law enforcement, so he wanted to maintain the kind of conservative tactical look of this knife. So we just went with black, and originally it was going to be uh, either a dark gray or a black backspacer, but I decided, um, since it took me a little bit longer than I had expected, 
uh, threw in the carbon fiber. Also offered him a carbon fiber clip. He wanted to keep the metal. So he's a serious, like, down-to-business kind of guy. I respect that a lot. Um, but the big difference in the way these two are made are the, the bolt that I put in to hold it together. So I, with this one, I went with two small ones. I figured, you know, conservative look, tactical. I figured he'd like that just a little bit better than the one big chain ring bolt I did with this and the orange and green G10 uh, grip that I did before. This one uh, was requested to be just a little bit thicker in the handle than the standard Grapillion. This is standard Grapillion size right here. Still very smooth, works beautifully. Uh, I put it together just a little bit tight, so, you know, I, I cleaned up the washers and everything so it all break in nicely. But, um, you know, there's, it's just a, a very simple, classy-looking job here. Um, every time I do one of these Grapillions, it gets easier and easier to do. And I've got two more lined up that I, uh, I've got people ordered right now that I'm working on this week. So, here's the one. And then this one, I really like the way this came out. So, basically, uh, it's jade, and then it's uh, a layer of OD green. And then on the inside, it's uh, for the backspacer, it's OD and black layered G10. What's really cool about this is it doesn't glow or anything, but when you turn the jade side to the light, you can see how it's kind of like the light shines through and it gets a little bit lighter. And while I'm out here, you can really see it a good effect, the, the way that the light shines through the one side of the jade at a time, which I really like. Kind of like just watching it as it rotates around, and then, ooh, it lights up. Really like that effect there. This came out great. The look of the jade over the OD green, I think it's just cool. It's kind of tactical, yet a little bit fancy. And um, I am obsessed with Jade, and I have a problem that I need to seek treatment because I'll put Jade G10 on anything, anything ever, always. So I don't have permission from the owners of the other Benchmades to show what we're working on with those, so um, I'm not going to show them right now. All right, well, guys, that's what I got for you. Um, hope somebody liked it out there. I'm not sure. Just doing it to put a video up and show off some stuff, basically. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. Uh, a lot of you have said that I should get on Instagram, and um, I'm on Instagram now, so if you want, you can check me out there. Um, I've just got a few pictures posted, but I'll be posting all sorts of stuff on there. It's DocP91B, just like uh, the YouTube name uh, on Instagram. So, see you guys out there somewhere. Going to be posting another video really soon about washer refurbishing and uh, how to, you know, smoothen out your knife a little bit. Smoothen? Is that a word? I said smoothen. Um, but it goes back to a conversation I had with a fellow YouTuber a while ago, and it just came up with someone else again about how you do that. So I'll put that up there. You guys might enjoy it. You might not. Um, we'll see. There's a little bit of an intro that goes with it. It's an older video, so you'll see where it all comes from. But short of that, I am done. So thanks for watching, guys, as always, and I'll be back again real soon.